Today we're going to be taking a look at the fractal design uh, aspect 12, specifically the RGB version. However, it does come in a non-RGB version. Welcome to Computer Tech and More, and let's get right into it. So first up, we have the case simulation test. This is a box that is designed to simulate how the air the air expands and blown out of the fan. So both determining how good the fan is at creating a good concentrated airflow, important for larger cases, or um, how effective it is at blowing air through your case. So I took four key data points, the 6, the 9, the 11, and the 14.5 inch mark. So the 6 inch mark is representative of a short throw distance, like uh, having bottom fans that blow directly up into your GPU, or a small case like an ITX case that is a... Um, small form factor type one that is still a front to back open airflow type design. Now the nine inch mark is represented by your compact tower, something that can hold the length of an ATX motherboard or an MATX motherboard and the GPU of equivalent length. And again, a front to back airflow. Then we have the 11 inch mark. The 11 inch mark is basically your bog standard mid tower case, something like the Corsair 550D, Meshify 2C, something along those lines. And then we have the 14.5 inch mark. This is represented by a large tower, something like the fractal design uh, torrent would be represented by the 14.5 inch mark. Now these data points are measured from the front of the case behind the fans to the rough position of the CPU sockets. So, this most simplest representation of how I determine a fan is using my control fan, this teal line. The control fan is three parts A12 X5 to one part A14. Uh, 140 millimeter class fans tend to do better at the 11 and 14.5 inch mark, while 120 millimeter class fans tend to do better at the six and the nine inch mark. So by blending the two fans together, I hope to create a composite, uh, good generalized purpose fan to then compare everything else against. So fans that are lined up with it would be considered good, fans that exceed it would be considered excellent and better, and fans that are under it could be considered okay to poor performing fans. So the Aspect 12 is overall what I would call an okay performing fan based on how far it's off from my control fan. It's not poor, but it's it's not very good overall. At 100% PW fan signaling, well, things have improved. Uh, we have the fan name over here, the RPM was spinning, and the noise level. So it is matching overall the performance of my control fan, so that's overall a good result. But you shouldn't be running your case fans at 100% PW fan signaling. If you are, something has probably gone terribly wrong inside your case, and you may need to look at your thermal solution on your CPU. Uh, but how does it compare against other fans that I've tested? So the Aspect 12 is right here. It starts off fairly good, or I would say okay, at the 6 and 9 inch mark, but then it starts to drop off pretty steeply, where it finally just starts to expand and slow down pretty significantly, and becoming an overall very poor performing fan. Now, I do have a limitation in my test results right now, where air speeds under about 0.5 meter per second are fairly inconsistent, and that is a problem with my anemometer. At this time, I would guess I'd like to give a brief explanation. I'm looking for help from you guys, and the way you can help is by joining me on Patreon, hitting that subscribe button. I'm I'm being <laughs> real with all of you. If you like what I'm doing, that'll be the best way to support this channel. Uh, I do want to get better testing equipment. I want to get a more accurate anemometer, something that is accurate within 0.01 meter per second rather than 0.1 meter per second, and that can register lower air speeds. I want to create a little sound chamber uh, to uh, help isolate the noises of my uh, room for testing purposes. I want to get a better dedicated microphone for noise testing. I want to build a little test system. All in all, it's like $2,000. It's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money. And I'm not asking for it for all one person. I'm not even asking for it. If you all just want to watch my videos for free on YouTube, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to keep making the way I am uh, with the equipment that I have available to me right now. But if you want to see this channel progress, well, that's how we'll do it together. Um, back to our regularly scheduled program. So... The Aspect 12 is kind of bottom performing by bigger cases, so I wouldn't recommend it for a larger case. How about at 100% PWM fan signaling? 
Well, the Aspect 12 is this orange fan, and I kind of call it the bottom of the good fans. It lines up okay with the other ones, but how are its noise levels? Well, 27 decibels in comparison to several of the other fans that are operating around it is on the noisy side, so that is pretty unfortunate with it. The Wonder Snail is slightly quieter than it, but uh, not that far out of reach, so but the Wonder Snail is outperforming it. So the aspect appears to be slight, a little bit on the noisy side for the amount of airflow that it's able to generate. Mind its air, actual airflow that it can generate isn't terrible. Now, how does it compare for airspeed versus noise? Just that brief explanation there. So the Aspect 12 is sitting right here and we have the Wonder Snail sitting right there. Again, the bottom end of what I consider to be a good fan. So the Aspect 12 is noisy for the amount of airflow it can produce. Um, I wouldn't call it terrible, but it's not good. I'd call it okay, sufficient, would be a good way to call it. Next, we're on to air speed through my CPU or cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. In all these tests, with just one fan attached to it, we're going to focus on the left side. And both these are, we're, first explanation, in all these tests, or graphs, uh, better fans are going to be seated top left, worse fans are going to be seated bottom right. Now let's focus on the left side. RPM versus airspeed is fundamentally a blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this blade designed at shoving air through this particular cooler. The cooler was chosen because it's the one I own. It's also a thicker, uh, fairly tightly, um, uh, tightly spaced, so dense fin stack, creating a good overall restriction. So it's a kind of middle ground between a radiator and a classic air cooler, at least in my opinion. So we do see that the Aspect 12 is overall slightly outperforming my control fan, so it's a good result there. But once we're looking at noise versus airspeed, the right graph, we see that it's kind of matching it at lower RPMs, but once we start getting over, what's that? 30, 40% PWM fan signaling. So still under a thousand RPM, it gets significantly noisier. So it's, it's just a noisy blade design, unfortunately in my testing. But how does it compare? Noise normalized results. It is sitting right behind the P12 PST ARGB, uh, above the Mobius OC, the Storm, the TLG12. This is sitting a little bit better in performance than them. So it's actually in a pretty good spot overall. It is a bit off from the top performers, so uh, not excellent, but certainly overall pretty good. So that's overall pretty accurate for my level of granularity I'm able to do right now. At 100% PWM fan signaling, well, it's pushing 1.8 meters per second of air uh, through my particular cooler. And next we have uh, airspeed through the cooler versus decibels again or uh, I don't know if I said it this video, uh, every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. So uh, 10 decibels to 20 decibels is twice as loud. So uh, just keep that in mind when taking a look at this graph. If line looks linear, it's not linear. So the Aspect 12 is sitting towards the bottom end of the graph. It is underperforming compared to these grouping of fans, which I consider all of them to be good fans. So... Um, I wouldn't quite call it terrible, but I wouldn't call it good either. The Aspect 12 is the 120 millimeter version of the 140 millimeter fan used in the RGB version of the torrent case. So this is the uh, RGB appearance when it's color cycling. And from ca the camera, I'm gonna try to get the focus to shift. We're gonna try to get a look at how many LEDs are in it. It looks like there are six, which is an okay amount sort of an average for the lower end of the spectrum. However, a lot of nicer fans that I've taken a look at now have had like eight plus, and primarily the ones that have a red around the ring have a lot more RGB or LED RGB lights. So the more lights you have, the better color blending it's able to achieve. There, this is it with just uh, my one stock color. So, First and foremost about this fan, basic black frame. Actually, this frame is not very good for radiator applications. So if you're thinking about using this fan on a radiator, I wouldn't recommend it. It's just got too many gaps around the edges of the frame. It's just not particularly good at that. Um, 
these gaps around the edges. I'm going to say it's got no vibration pads to speak of. It's just got this little indent and it's just plain old plastic. On the back, even these struts are, well, they're kind of airfoil shaped, but they're pretty basic. So there's not much to write home about there. Really the main aspect of this fan that is interesting is this front lip on the fan. So I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but it's got all this little groove. So it's got a step right there. Can you hear it? So that step is there to like trip the air to a more turbulent state, probably in the hopes of keeping the air uh, close to the fan blade as it's uh, flowing over it, rather than creating like a boundary layer or coming off of it. The fan blade design looks to be more like a pressure bladed fan, although the spacing is pretty wide. They're just thicker fan blades. A lot of uh, airflow focused blades are thinner, but they have a decent curvature in the front. Next, we have CFM testing. This is my least favorite test for a number of reasons, but mostly it has to do with how other reviewers use it. CFM testing by other reviewers, you have the fan, you put it in a tube, you blow air down the tube, and they call this a case airflow test. Or, hey, this fan has a high CFM, so it's good for your case airflow. You're missing half the story. Any reviewer who does a test this way doesn't understand aerodynamics. But let's get into it because, well, I generated the data anyways. So the Aspect 12 and my control fan are pretty much lined up perfectly, but once we take a look at the noise performance, well, it's not doing that great overall. So how does it stack up on these graphs? Well, it's kind of in the middle of the pack, bottom middle, so it's overall okay overall. And at 100% PWM fan signal, ignore the little correction I had to make on it. I found that it has linked to the uh, wrong data point on my Excel table. That's why it's got that little bit of correction on it. Excel was not behaving for me or in allowing me to recreate this graph, so I had to do that. But 68.5 puts it right about there above the Masterfan SF120M. So kind of bottomish middle of the pack, not a terrible result overall. So I call that kind of fine in terms of its positioning. And you do see the RPM and the noise level. The noise level is a overall problem for this fan. It is just a bit noisier than the other fans around it for a similar amount of airflow. So that's a little bit unfortunate and sort of the case in point right here. So this is a CFM versus decibel reading and it, especially at higher RPMs, is just on the noisy side. So I'd call it okay. We're on to value proposition. Value proposition is a real simple. It is how much uh, performance do you get per dollar? So that's where this fan has a real problem. Online on Amazon, when I purchased the fan, it was a $60 fan for one fan. So it's really expensive. So its value proposition is going to be really bad. I uh, wouldn't buy this fan at that price. Um, half the price double the value proposition, puts it in a much better spot compared to other ones, but that's still expensive for its overall performance. So it, it's uh, like $30 is still kind of high for this fan in my opinion. Like 20 25 is the target point I think in terms of its like including, including take a look in RGB. Uh, but anyways, that's a different topic. So the Aspect 12 is sitting right there in a abysmal result. We're going to just move on because it's so bad. The 11 inch mark, it's abysmal, terrible, I, basically not even worth buying. Let's move on. Okay, CPU cooler performance, it's bad, 0.9, everything else is just so much better than, there are other RGB fans on here that are so much better value than this fan, and their RGB is equivalent looking. So let's move on. And uh, CFM test, well, it's once again pretty bad overall. So, conclusion for this fan. It's performance by itself, without taking a look at how much it costs, is sub-average. It, it, it's an okay fan. 
But the problem with it is, is its price. At $60, it is too expensive for the amount of performance you're getting, even considering the RGB. Now, I want to make one thing clear. This fan, if it comes free in your computer case, there is nothing wrong with using it. It came with your computer case. Use it. Uh, unless it's uh, rattling or something like that and it's just creating an awful noise for you. Uh, but I, I wouldn't buy this fan new. I wouldn't buy it to replace a fan in the case that it came with if it went bad. It would be just something that I used till it broke and then I'd move on. All right, and at the end of every video, I do like to show off my raw data. Um, the data at this level of granularity takes me about one and a half to two hours to generate per fan. So I've done a lot of fans, so I've devoted a lot of time into this. Um, it, this data does belong to me if you want to use it for your own set of particular uses, i.e. you want to make your own Excel tables to be able to chart stuff in the future without needing to reference my videos, you are more than welcome to do so. However, if you're going to put in any sort of video, publication, written, or journal, I do ask that you reference me and my channel. After all, I am the one who put in the hard work to generate it. And uh, kind of the hardest part of all of this is actually like uh, making the graphs uh, nice and neat and organized to present to all of you. And then, of course, recording the videos. Uh, if you've got suggestions on how I can improve my videos, please leave in the comment section down below. I'm always trying to improve it to make them more enjoyable for all of you to watch. It is an iterative process to me. I do a lot of recording up front, so it may take time for me to implement changes. Um, if you got suggestions for fans to me to take a look at in the future, please leave in those in the comment sections down below. The easiest way for me to get them is currently Amazon, so I do ask that they be available there. Um, other than that, I appreciate each and every one of you who made it this far. Thank you for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. If you want to, if you're looking for a way to support me, uh, please subscribe and, uh, think about joining on Patreon. Every penny will go to, um... Well, acquiring better testing equipment so that I can compete with the big dogs who have much bigger budgets than me. Um, anyways, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.